Hey everybody, how's it going? Corey here from ThemeCo with a quick video on global blocks and how they exist in this new world of components and parameters that are part of this latest release cycle. So this video is gonna focus primarily on how anything that you built under the old global block system will function alongside components. And I think you'll see that it's pretty streamlined, pretty straightforward, and honestly, um, if you don't touch anything, nothing will change. We just wanna make sure that you're aware of where to find your old content, how to reference it and use it, and move forward with things. So let's take a little history lesson and go back to why we created global blocks in the first place, because this is kind of the foundation for where we've come with components and parameters. So global blocks were born out of a desire for users to create little you know, Lego brick type pieces of reusable content that they could place all throughout their site. So for example, I've got this uh, old global block I had that was a call to action. Um, and this was a pattern we saw a lot where maybe, you know, right above the footer, users wanted to have this call to action section that wasn't really part of the footer and didn't really need to go on every page, but most pages needed it. And instead of having to design that, you know, maybe 10, 12, 14 times over, Think of the time savings you could get if you could just design it once and then pull it through on the pages that you need. So that's how global blocks function. You would effectively design a section or multiple sections within the global block builder, and then you would pull it through later on a page with the global block element. And you would just basically from a list of your global blocks, select the one you wanted, and it would pull through on your page. So the important distinction to remember here about global blocks is that everything in the document that you've created will get pulled through when you used that global block element. Now, people started to get a little bit more creative with using global blocks, and they realized that, you know, if really all you wanted was a button, you could effectively zero out all of the wrapping markup around that button by removing its visual styling or um, any colors or anything like that. Um, and then essentially, visually, on the page that you pulled this through, you would get just a button. But in reality, you were getting all of this extra markup, you were getting any of the styles associated with it, etc. So it was a little bit of a workaround, but people did use it for that purpose if they just wanted to pull through a button in certain situations. Now this worked really great for a while, but of course it has some inherent limitations. For this particular example with the button, you get the extra markup and styling that you don't need. And that of course just makes the, the markup a little more complicated to debug or work through and could potentially introduce some side effects because um, this markup might behave differently when it ends up on a page. And you also couldn't edit the content, right? So for example, back on my call to action section there, you know, that headline, that button, the link in the button, all of that was static. So that worked great for really simple use cases but if you had to change things on a per instance basis, that wasn't possible. You basically had to go make multiple global blocks and then output them where needed. So this is what components and parameters aims to solve for us. It allows us to export only the markup and the content that we need. It also allows us to plug in variable content where we need it. Again, that's gonna be discussed in another video, but just kind of keep that in mind as we're talking through these things here. All right, so where will you find your old global blocks content that you have created in previous versions of the tool? Well, if we go to the document navigator here and go to the very bottom, you'll see a new section called components. Um, and anything that was a global block in your previous versions of the tool will be found here. Now, they will not have this GB migration prefix. I just added that so I could kind of keep track of you know my old content versus new content here. And that's actually something you might wanna do for yourself, just to kind of keep things a little more organized. You could go in and just put GB before anything that was built before the component builder came around. But that's where you'll find those global blocks documents. So, you know, this button here is the one that I'm looking at right here and nothing will change in these documents. They will kind of just silently swap over to this new component system and that's where you'll find them. Now to actually pull through these whole documents on a page, to keep the naming of everything consistent, instead of the old global block element, you will now use the component element. Now, um, a slight distinction here, but remember that the component element from the element library is different than a component export that you export from that component document. Again, we'll talk about all that 
in a later video. But what you're looking for here, if you need to pull through a whole global block or a whole document, you would simply just search for component. And under the standard library, you'll see the component element here. So you would add that to your page and you can see I've already got two component elements here. And just like the global block element, when I select to inspect that element, there's basically one control here where I can select from my list of documents. Now you'll see that all of my component documents are available, right? Because this is kind of a backwards compatible system, but anything in that component document tree, I can pull through here. But remember that when you're using this element, you're pulling through all of the markup from that document. So it behaves just like the global blocks did in previous versions. So you can see here, for example, I've selected that GB migration call to action. So I'm getting that whole call to action section being pulled through here. And then down here, what I've actually got is a section with a row with a column. And then inside that column, I've put this component element and I've pulled through my GB migration button component. So this is that idea where I've kind of zeroed out all of the surrounding markup, but technically there is a whole nother section, a whole nother row and column around this button that you're just not seeing because I've kind of visually made it disappear. But of course, if we wanted to, I could go up here and I could select my call to action section and you would see that pull through like so. And remember, I only had one section in that document, so I'm just pulling through that section here um, and that's what we're getting on the page. So pretty straightforward here. This honestly will all kind of silently upgrade for you behind the scenes, but your document tree might look a little bit different because anything that said global block before, if you didn't rename it, is now gonna say component because it's referencing that component element. Your global blocks documents will be found under the component section down here. And just remember that the component element is different than actual component exports that show up in your library. So the cool thing about exporting components to your library is they show up just like standard elements do in here. So for example, if I search for button, you'll see that I have three button components here that I've made. And you know we've got the default button element that's part of our standard element library, but these are my custom buttons that I've designed. And you're gonna see how I've put them together in later videos and how you can make patterns just like this. And the great thing about this is I can drag these in just like normal elements. And then they also have custom parameters or controls on them that are just the controls I need. So I can greatly simplify the amount of customization I need to do because I've already kind of set up the line share of the work in the sheet. And then I've just got the controls I need to make minor tweaks from there. So um, lots of really fun stuff that we're about to dive into here with components and parameters. But hopefully you guys have gotten a lot out of this video, just kind of understanding how global blocks will work moving forward. And, um, and really this is all for kind of backwards compatibility. We do recommend moving forward using components in the way we've designed them because it greatly improves the amount of flexibility that you have in working with your elements.